Welcome back to the HIV RNA Test Guide podcast. You know, your trusted source for reliable information on HIV testing prevention and treatment. Absolutely. And today, uh, we're going to be diving into a topic that's, I think, particularly relevant to our listeners. Um, you know, the potential of moving beyond daily pills for HIV treatment. Yeah. It's an area that's seeing some really promising developments. It is. But of course, before we get into the specifics, you know, always good to level set. Um, uh, you know, our listeners already know that HIV is the virus and AIDS is the condition that develops if HIV is left untreated. Right. And early detection, especially through tests like the HIV RNA test, that's absolutely critical. Yes. Very important. So let's talk about where we are right now. Uh, for decades, antiretroviral therapy or RT right. has been the gold standard for managing HIV. Yep. It's been incredibly effective in suppressing the virus, allowing people with HIV to live, you know, longer, healthier lives. Absolutely. But um, that said, RT does require daily adherence. Yes. And we know that can be challenging for some folks. It can be a challenge. So researchers are exploring new solutions, and that's where therapeutic vaccines come in. Right. Now, it's important to understand that therapeutic vaccines are different from the preventative ones that you're probably familiar with. Yes, very different. Preventative vaccines are designed to stop you from getting infected in the first place. Right. Therapeutic vaccines, on the other hand, are for people already living with HIV. Correct. They aim to train the immune system to control the virus more effectively. That's right. And the ultimate goal here is to move towards a functional cure, mm. meaning long-term control of HIV without needing daily art. Exactly. Imagine the impact that could have reduced medication burden, fewer side effects, and the possibility of a life, you know, less defined by HIV. Yeah. I mean, that would be incredible, wouldn't it? It'd be huge. Just to, you know, reduce that burden of having to take medication every day. Yeah. And uh, and really just kind of, you know, live your life without constantly thinking about it. Exactly. So it's a really exciting area of research. Yeah. And what's really exciting is the idea of combining art, art with these therapeutic vaccines. Yeah. It's like a one-two punch against HIV. That's a great way to put it. RT suppresses the virus, giving the immune system a breather mm. and then the vaccine steps in to train it to fight back even harder right it's like giving your body the tools it needs to to really mount a strong defense yes, against it, the virus and this isn't just theoretical there are ongoing clinical trials testing different vaccine candidates yeah that's right one promising approach is using something called broadly neutralizing antibodies or bean abs yes alongside these vaccines and these antibodies can target multiple strains of HIV, mm -hmm. offering a broader spectrum of protection. That's right, because, you know, HIV can mutate. Right. So it's important to have something that can target different strains different strains of the virus. Yeah. 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 And what's fascinating about this approach is that it's not just about suppressing the virus, but about actually training the immune system to recognize and fight HIV more effectively. Exactly. It's like teaching your body how to defend itself. Right. Rather than just, you know, throwing medication at it. Yeah. It's a more proactive approach. It is. And I think that's what makes it so promising. Yeah. It's really exciting to see where this research goes. Absolutely. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. It's really like empowering the immune system to do its job. Exactly. You know? Yeah. And, and we're already seeing encouraging results in early clinical trials. That's right. You know, some participants have been able to maintain viral suppression for extended periods after stopping RD. Wow. Which is a really promising sign. That is really promising. It is. Yeah. Um, of course, you know, this research is still in its early stages. Right. There are challenges to overcome. Of course. Um, like developing vaccines that are effective against a wide range of HIV strains and ensuring their long-term safety, you know? Right. Making sure it's going to work for everyone. Exactly. And that it's not going to cause any problems down the line. Exactly. Yeah. But the progress we're seeing is definitely exciting. It suggests a future where managing HIV could be more about periodic vaccine boosts than daily pills. Wow, that would be amazing. Wouldn't that be incredible? It would. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that brings us to an important point. You know, early detection. Right. The sooner HIV is identified, the sooner treatment can begin. Absolutely. Regardless of whether it's RT or these newer therapies. Right. And this is where understanding the nuances of HIV testing becomes crucial. Yeah. And this is where, you know, RNA tests are particularly valuable. Yes. In this context. Absolutely. They can detect HIV at very early stages of infection. Right. Even before antibodies develop. Yeah. So, you know, this early detection is critical for starting treatment promptly and preventing the virus from really gaining a foothold. 
And when it comes to monitoring the effectiveness of these new combination therapies, RNA tests also play a vital role. Absolutely. You know, they provide precise measurement of viral load. Yes. Allowing healthcare providers to track how well the treatment is working and adjust if needed. Exactly. It's like having a, you know, a clear picture of what's happening mm -hmm. inside the body. So as we're on the cusp of these potential breakthroughs in treatment, it's essential to remember that reliable HIV testing remains the cornerstone of effective care. Absolutely. I completely agree. Now, I know our listeners are interested in staying ahead of the curve when it comes to HIV management. Yes. And while these developments in therapeutic vaccines are incredibly promising. They are. We can't forget about the importance of prevention. Right. Prevention is always key. Because even if we reach a point where HIV is more easily managed or even curable, preventing new infections should always be a priority. Absolutely. It's about protecting yourself and others and reducing the overall impact of HIV on individuals and communities. Exactly. It's about, you know, taking a holistic approach yeah. to HIV prevention and care. Right. And thankfully, we have more tools than ever before to effectively reduce HIV transmission. We do. Pre-exposure prophylaxis or pre-VP yes. has been a game changer. It has. Providing a way for people to proactively protect themselves from HIV. Absolutely. It's a really powerful powerful tool yeah. for prevention. So pre-EP, along with other prevention methods like condoms and regular testing, remain vital components of a comprehensive approach to HIV. Absolutely. We need to use all the tools we have. Right. It's about empowering individuals with the knowledge and tools they need to make informed choices about their sexual health. Exactly. So as we look ahead to this future where HIV treatment could be revolutionized, right. we must remember that prevention remains a crucial pillar in our fight against this virus. Yes, I couldn't agree more. It's about a holistic approach, combining groundbreaking scientific advancements with a continued focus on education awareness and access to reliable testing and prevention methods. Exactly, it's about you know bringing everything together right. to really make a difference. And it's about recognizing that the fight against HIV extends beyond the laboratory. Yes. And into our communities. Oh. Right, and it's about understanding that even with these promising advancements on the horizon, we can't afford to let our guard down. That's right. We need to stay vigilant. We do. Um, but yeah, it's definitely an exciting time to be, you know, involved in this field. It is. There's so much hope. There is a there's lot of hope for the end. future. Yeah. It is a lot of hope for the future. And, you know, I, I think it's really interesting to think about, um, you know, imagine a world where HIV is managed with just a few vaccine shots. Yeah. That would be... Uh, you know, it's a really powerful thought, isn't it? It is. Um, and it raises a lot of questions, too, especially about the social stigma that has unfortunately been associated with HIV for so long. Right. Um, you know, if, if treatment becomes as simple as getting a vaccine, could we finally start to see that stigma fade? Yeah. Could it lead to a greater understanding and acceptance of people living with HIV? I, I think it has the potential to completely reshape how society views HIV. You know, it could be a huge step forward in breaking down those harmful stereotypes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and on a personal level, think about the freedom this could offer individuals living with HIV. Yeah. You know, no more daily pill regimens, no more constant reminders of their condition. It could be truly liberating. Yeah. Allowing them to live their lives to the fullest without that weight on their shoulders. Exactly. And, and you know, while we're, you know, obviously very excited about this possibility, I think it's important to be realistic, too. Right. This shift in treatment wouldn't magically erase all the challenges. Of course. Um, you know, there are practical considerations like ensuring equitable access to these vaccines globally right. and addressing potential logistical hurdles. Yeah. And, and we also need to be mindful of the possibility that easier treatment could lead to a decline in preventative measures. Mm. You know, right. education and awareness will still be absolutely crucial. Absolutely. We can't let our guard down. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's a balancing act. It is. But I think, you know, the the progress that's being made is is really encouraging. It's very encouraging. Um, and it's, you know, it's giving people a lot of hope. It is giving people a lot of hope. I'm sorry. And that's what I find so encouraging about the direction we're heading in. You know, it's yep. not just about scientific breakthroughs. It's about the potential to improve the lives of millions of people around the world. Exactly. And that's what it's all about, ultimately. It is. Yeah. It's about giving hope and fostering a future where HIV no longer holds the same power it does today. Yes. I love that. Yeah. Love that sentiment. So we've covered a lot of ground in this deep dive, you know, exploring both the science and the broader implications 
of these potential advancements in HIV treatment. We have. And uh, I hope our listeners have found it as insightful as I have. I hope so too. Um, before we wrap up, I, I want to leave you with this. Stay curious, stay informed, and stay engaged in the conversation about HIV. Yes. You know, the more we understand, the better equipped we are to advocate for progress and support those affected by this virus. Yeah. And remember, even as we explore these exciting new avenues in treatment, the tools we have today, like reliable HIV testing, remain essential for effective care. Yes. Could not agree more. So if you have any concerns about your HIV status, don't hesitate to visit HIVRNNATESGUIDE.COM. Yes, please do. It's a valuable resource for finding reliable and confidential testing options. Absolutely, and there are testing centers all over the country, so it's easy to find one near you. It is. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining us on this journey into the future of HIV treatment. Thank you for having me. Until next time, stay empowered and stay hopeful. Yes, stay hopeful.